as we cover many an insane movie and numerous cult TV phenomena. Are you ready to get jacked up? Are you with us? Then listen on. From the Night Watch Movie Review YouTube channel. <laughs> Back on Woo-hoo. finally. Yeah, it's been finally. a while. He lives. <laughs> <laughs> right. <It's> I know. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Not too many people are laughing these days. So instead of True. talking about sitcoms for the billionth time on here, we're just going to talk about some underappreciated, uh, independently produced indie comedies. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds very good. <laughs> it's the second part of this conversation, and it just—it really is kind of interesting how many of these you can just find still just playing endlessly on the movie channels with still not enough fanfare or just on typical streaming sites. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That actually, it's a good point. Absolutely, <laughs> and. It is kind of wild because I just was so used to often seeing them kind of promote it and I just kind of stopped being a thing. It's like, no, I'm just going to just play it on loop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. And and it just goes right under the radar. And especially, you know, I think nowadays, uh, you know, for, for the younger generation, the kids, um, they don't really know. They don't really know about a lot of these movies no you know, unless it's, it's of, like spike lee or tarantino they it's just not on their radar and it's like yes for real right <laughs> okay. oh. yeah exactly I, it's too bad i don't get it yeah <laughs> right uh so uh I'll, I'll let you go first i always let the guests go first just uh just any crazy comedy that you got at a dvd store or <laughs> well one of the first ones that um, kind of came to my mind, and this one, this one was kind of way out of left field, and this was back in the day of going, uh, you know, to the video store and usually picking out a movie based upon the cover art or maybe if you know the actor. But have you ever seen a movie called UHF? Yes, I actually have the Blu-ray. <laughs> All right, okay. So, like, not not a lot of people know about UHF, you know? They really and, don't. They knew yeah. Weird Al made one, but yeah, it's like it seems like unless they were like seeking out parodies, is like I mean, hell, I saw it years ago on VHS when I was twelve, so it was like, yeah, but yeah, like you say, it's like yeah, it's, not it's like you know, people like you said, they might they might have heard of Weird Al or, you know, like you said, they know that he did something, but they don't really know anything about this movie. And (laughs) this movie was hilarious, man. I I mean, I love, I love that type of comedy anyways. And especially back then, um, we had a a plethora of movies that were like that in the eighties, you know, whether you were talking about, you know, airplane and, and, (laughs) <laughs> obviously things that came after like the naked gun and all of that type of stuff so this was right up my alley man but i i truly i truly enjoyed this movie and it was so funny at the time when i and this was when i was in school obviously nice. um, we used to we used to talk about this movie a lot you know right. and imitate <laughs> it and everything but um i absolutely loved it and i really wish that that weird al had done some more stuff because i thought he was great in it <laughs> I really did. Yeah. But nobody nobody talks about it. 
Nobody it, ever they really about don't. Anything. It's like yeah. they'll have, even just casual fans will have at least you know heard at least five of his songs. Sometimes even without even realizing they're listening to the parody versus the actual song he was mocking. And yes, I'm sure, I'm sure someone saw part of the numerous MTV shows he did where he did like mock interviews or you know <laughs> game yes. show host parodies. But yeah, it's like this is kind of a best of his material without just feeling without feeling like a clip show and like you say um it's uh movie sign with the mads back when that was a podcast uh frank conniff and trace billy you even briefly talked about this and s- talked about some of the other inside jokes that go other mm-hmm. over other people's heads it's like oh yeah i used to watch that endlessly on antenna channels yeah yeah <laughs> right right yeah and yeah how it really is a love letter to that time i mean people kind of hear about antenna channel without kind of thinking about what it means and like you do realize mm-hmm. pl- just like radio is always going to be exist people still have regular cable <laughs> yes yes exactly static yeah. channels even in a digital world i mean nintendo channels are going to get through one way or the other so that's right yeah absolutely but you know it's it's funny with you mentioning that with you know everything being digital and and just how the world has <laughs> changed so much so much since this came out in 1989 this type of movie um it, it, it it's kind of it's kind of fun man it's like it really is. It, it, it's like a you know one of those like a message in the bottle type of thing you know from back in the day thank you and, yes and it just, yeah it just kind of takes you back you know and god i i mean you know i'm not saying it's the greatest movie of all time but it definitely had its <laughs> ch- charm and it's too bad that we don't have things like that today. You know, it's a good yeah. thing. It's not overrated, you know, like this hasn't been yeah, overrated. Well, that's true. That's true. People would post in the early days of YouTube, like the Rambo and Conan, the bar- the librarian skits. And it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I get it. But that's not the only funny part of the movie. You silly guys. Right. But yeah, right. like you say, I mean, it's a spoof movie done with heart and it, I mean, they knew what they were making. They knew, mm-hmm. and Weird Al knew he was a comedian first versus an actor. So I think that's just it. It helped that they didn't just overdo it. They didn't overstay his welcome. They had mm-hmm. numerous other rising comers, um, Kramer, Por- <laughs> mm-hmm. Seinfeld, pre-Seinfeld, yep. po- pre-Scandal. <laughs> and then, yes. Uh, and the lovely name? Fran Dresser. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone seems to forget she hasn't done as many movies this is mostly for the most part was the sitcom gal you know mm-hmm. yes absolutely. Um, what's her name from snl who kind of got kind of radical and hasn't really done isn't as much you know the one oh uh, geez um victoria jackson that's who yeah yes vicky jackson yep yep <laughs> yeah uh, but they had some good people in it man they really did. Uh, Kevin McCarthy from The Howling is there, um, and yes, uh, Joel Hodgson from Mystery Science Theater. You know who was a big uh, friend of both Jerry Seinfeld and mm-hmm. Weird Al. Almost got to be in this, but was not. <laughs> uh, so it was so funny what, on the movie sign with the Mads. They yeah, we're trying to figure out what role he would have played. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny There's to see. Numerous characters, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. But yeah, I, I love I love this movie. I don't have it on Blu-ray, man. I gotta I gotta get it. I've yeah, it I pretty D- much. I've got it on DVD, but I was lucky. I just it was kind of by accident, just an eBay just deal. And I mean, obviously, I've seen it years ago it was just one of those like yeah i want to at least see the supplemental material and all that <laughs> yes Absolutely. features for the shout factor release um um but yeah just looking it up now it seems like there's a lot of alternate versions and how the dvd apparently had some mixed into stuff and i'm like yeah i mm. I, I wouldn't know i only saw it in hs back in the day <laughs> yes yep yeah, but it's great. It's a good one. No, good. That definitely a good pick. Um, so I got one. Uh, this is another one I bought by accident. I went to town Uh-oh. earlier on eBay this year. I found this one called "Advice from a Caterpillar," and it's just a wacky movie. Advice from a caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
Uh, I had known years ago it was like one of Timothy Oliphant's earlier movie, but it was more to it than that. Like, <laughs> uh, so there was this company called DEG Entertainment or something like that. It was part of First Look and later formed mm-hmm. Millennium Films, and they were just like the kings of just doing movies that were festival releases. Just a little mm-hmm. backstory, um, and they it, they would always be like front row seat in being sent to uh blockbuster and showtime it's just like that was just their distribution deal <laughs> mm-hmm. yep it's a fun just kind of awkward love triangle kind of movie it's got cynthia nixon uh john tenney who you probably know from tombstone and yes. closer and uh all of fun but it's also just kind of it makes fun of kind of everything like <laughs> people going away to a cabin uh, guy cheating who doesn't who's just too stupid to know that he's in, hopelessly in love <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> and, and it just kind of puts that on its head without just being awkward and i was kind of hesitant at first because you see andy dick on the cover and thank god he's only like in like one scene it, he is not in this movie much <laughs> and like and yeah, uh that was a good thing <laughs> totally and at the end like it ends up at a diner and there's all these other wacky characters who have nothing at all to do with the plot, who are just kind of like leaning in saying, kiss her, kiss her, propose. And it just makes it even funnier and wacky. Oh, gosh. But it's very organized. It's so, it's over before you know it. And Mm -hmm. it, just when you think you know where it's going, it really just kind of just, it's like kind of just a spoof of a spoof. And Mm -hmm. even looking in, I had no idea. Just there were so many other people. It was like, I didn't recognize them. It was like, they were that unrecognizable. I had no idea Sarah Hyland from Modern Family was in there. Oh, wow. Wee little bun. I'm like, she must be the young girl briefly there. And I just didn't recognize. But I recognized Robert Joy from Land of the Dead in CSI New York. Nice. I didn't recognize some of those other people there. Um, Ali Sheedy's in there briefly, but really, really briefly. Yeah. (laughs) It's a fun comedy in that it just kind of it's just just the scenario, just a woman falling in love with a gay friend's boyfriend. It just it just had that kind of fun kind of well, really, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, no, it's already set up right there for you, you know. <laughs> a dolly. And it helped that like because you don't know what to predict, that just was its biggest strength and uh, there's some other inside jokes. Timothy Oliphant is wearing a uh, t-shirt of a band that his brother apparently played for called Fetish. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's a weird name for a band, but that's funny. And yeah, it's just a fun, 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 fun. Oh, that's a good one. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I'm sure you could find it for like two peanuts <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're probably right <laughs> oh, oh, cool. I, I hate being right, <laughs> <laughs> right. okay um yeah i'll let you pick a few up <laughs> all right well uh, here's one and and when 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 we figured that we were going to be when I figured I was going to be joining you with this, I was like, all right, let me let me try to think of something that I don't have a lot of people that I know that talk about, you know, as far as you know these these underrated comedies, and you know, of course, a lot of things came to mind. Here's one, I'm sure you've seen it, and I don't know, if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily underrated, uh, but I just never hear anyone talk about it, but. Um, that movie uh, with Woody Harrelson and Randy Quaid, uh, Kingpin. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That one was one that uh, when when I had when I had seen it, and I don't even remember how it came about that I saw it, but I I saw <laughs> I saw it, and I was like, man, this is this is pretty darn funny. But I never hear anyone talk about it. I don't know if I don't I don't know if you've seen it or not, but. I've I, definitely I, seen it. I well, just think, like you say, I think they're too busy being distracted by their the Farrelly brothers' later stuff. And could be, yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's that it had like a PG thirteen R rated version. I'm like, jeez. <laughs> yes, I yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was so distracted because I was like, uh, so what? <laughs> Who was it for? 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it's definitely a, a pretty go goofy film. And um, yeah, I got I got some good laughs out of it. It was kind of one of those surprising things. Of course, you get uh, Bill Murray. He shows up in it. And, you know, he uh, does every, his... <laughs> every movie was at a bowling alley. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And, uh, you know, he, he does his uh, he does his Bill Murray thing. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of his stuff, but most of most of his earlier stuff. But um, but anyways, but yeah, this movie, uh, you know, I think it came out in 98 or something like that. Um, so it was one of those movies that, like I said, it just kind of caught me off guard. And I watched it. I was like, man, that's actually pretty funny. But like <laughs> I said, I, I just don't I don't hear many people talking about it or anything. A lot of, a lot of these comedies. And obviously a lot more than what we'll be talking about they really do kind of just it's almost like they get lost in time you know so, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah it's a good question it's like why why is it not being talked about as much it's like uh, yeah 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 i mean you know and, and of course you know when you think of woody harrelson you know my first uh connection with him was obviously on cheers <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I loved watching him on that. My parents loved watching him on that. And the show was fantastic. But, you know, a lot of people now, when they think of Woody Harrelson, they think of, you know, some of his more high, high profile stuff, you know, whether it's stuff he did in The Hunger Games or whatever. <laughs> but people forget. I think sometimes people forget he, he has really good, at least to me anyways, I think he has really good comedic timing. And he's, he's really a funny, he's a good actor, of course. Uh, but he's a really good comedian, in, in my opinion. So yeah, he can do it dry. He can do it way over the top. It just kind of depends on the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If not, how high yes. he is? I don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good point. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but yeah, but I yeah. mean, that's a, that's very intriguing pick because I mean, it was a pretty mainstream movie. It flopped with critics. It, Yes, varied with audiences, and yet it seems to be just kind of second nature. Like everyone has bought it multiple times with whatever special edition. <laughs> yes, um, it kind of got to the point where it's like you would read it in TV Guide and just varying uh, review star ratings, to where you're like, "Wait, is that the critics rating, or is that the TV Guide own critical yeah. of analysis, or is this just?" Right. going off of the imdb score what's <laughs> it, yeah you can't expect every movie to <laughs> land but true enough i i think it's an interesting pick there because um I, how else can i say it? it's just like it, it basically has <laughs> created more than just a fan club it's created a whole different kind of comedy crowd i guess i <laughs> mm, that's a good point yeah that's a good point i can definitely I, see that <laughs> I mean, um i guess what's your favorite take from it before we go on to the next one <laughs> huh well what, what would you say is your overall favorite scenes and, or are there just too many to choose? <laughs> oh, there were a lot to choose, but you know, I, I will tell you this. One of the things that really caught me off guard, because I'm, I'm a fan of her, is Lynn Shea in, in the movie as the, <laughs> uh, the landlord, or the landlady, I should say. And man, she was just, she was just so gross and crass. But it's, you know, it's funny because, you know, I'm a, well, of course, most people now, they think of her, you know, from um, uh, the Insidious movies, and you know she's 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 definitely leaned more into horror in the last whatever it's been decade or so. So people think of her, you know, kind of <laughs> from that. But um, right. she was also in uh, there's something there's something about Mary, and I think <laughs> I think she's funny. I think she's she's hilarious. But um, I loved all the scenes with her, and then of course Bill Murray. I mean, come on, you know, <laughs> he, he, every time he was on every time he was on screen, it was great. Um, and, and, and with that being said, all of that is also with with the fact that Woody Harrelson and Randy Qu Quaid, I thought they had good chemistry together. So, like I said, it was one of those movies. I, I it was to a total surprise. I forgot how I watched it. I don't know if it was, you know, one of those situations where we we, we got we got some movies and that was in the the, 
you know, <laughs> and, and I just watched it. I think that's how it was, to be honest with you, because it was so long ago. You're talking whatever; it's been 20 years, but um, <laughs> but it was 20 something years. But um, but I watched it and I was like, wow, that actually was that was actually funny. I like that. And perfect. <laughs> never really heard much about it since. <laughs> That works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Good, good. Um, so I guess I could do one to kind of wrap this up, I guess. Um, okay. This mini episode. Uh, I'm going to go with There's Always Vanilla. And if anyone sa- thinks that sounds vaguely familiar, it's because it was an earlier movie that uh, George Romero did. <laughs> That is a comedy. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I got the rare, hard to find, like, dual disc DVD, which has this and uh, Season of the Witch. And I mainly bought it because it also had his, uh, the Stars documentary series, the directors. And it's like, okay, cool. If that's the only way to find that episode, it's just like great hearing him discuss film and have this. And he didn't really take this all that seriously, but he's actually pretty proud of it because you know it was for like a drive-in company that mostly did kind of blue movies and it's like but Mm -hmm. you know this was a straightforward comedy and Mm -hmm. just another coming of age you can tell it's personal because it's around pittsburgh and you know he was familiar but instead of just having it be kind of blue collar it's just kind of just a man just kind of uh rejecting everything you know his father offers him just while he's just totally in love with this slightly older gal and mm-hmm. uh, becomes just kind of a uh, it, it, they pretty much have to just figure out if this relationship is going to work but it goes in other atypical ways again it's another movie that uses the town to kind of characterize the rest of them like, yeah and also it starts out in the diner see I'm going with a theme here <laughs> <laughs> uh the love interest is none other than Judas Ridley, who, of course, goes on to, st- who had already starred as Judy in Night of the Living Dead. So, yes. <laughs> um, I thought Season of the Witch was the better one, but I mean, this was also pretty interesting. And I guess, kind of like Knight Riders, you just kind of get a sense that, again, you know, he he's comfortable just doing any kind of genre, even though yeah. everyone just still just wanted to say, "Oh, he's the zombie guy." I'm like, well. Right, he, he can do that, but he can also do this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he he was very, he was very talented, you know, in my opinion. And I think, and I, you know, and I remember seeing interviews with him actually talking about how he was pigeonholed, you know, as as like you said, the zombie guy, and how he struggled <laughs> with that for quite a long time. And then, you know, fortunately, at least fortunately for him, he came to terms with it, and 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 kind of made peace with it, so to speak. But yeah, he, he was a fantastic director. I love his movies. I haven't seen this one in, I don't even know how long, um, but I do I do love George, George Romero. <laughs> his, his filmography is actually a lot more diverse uh, than people, than, than the average person knows. Right. That's a, that that that's a good go. tip. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Well, more or less, I mean, a lot of these movies just kind of, it seems like nowadays you're going to get one that's either sweet natured or too crude. And so you don't really know what you're in for unless, you know, you bite the bullet yeah. and just figure it out. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> and, you know, with that being said, too, especially... Um, you know, because I've got a, I've got a lot of friends that have kids, and, and, and I, you know, I, I'm a, I work around kids and stuff like that, younger younger folks, and you know, their idea of comedy is is vastly different. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and 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 what and what I mean by that too is kind of like what you were alluding to is that you know, if the if the movie or the comedy that they're watching, if it, if it is not, you know, totally crude and and, and totally pessimistic and just kind of you know, whatever, they don't really, they don't really vibe with it. And it's like, you guys are missing out on so many great comedies, man, that, you know, (laughs) just all different varieties, you know, and, uh, 
it, it, it's too bad. I, I sometimes wonder if if the comedies that you know that we grew up on or saw, you know, back in the day, I, I kind of wonder if if that stuff will come back, you know, um, because it's fantastic stuff. We actually on my on my channel, we've actually been doing a top ten of comedies from each decade. We just did the seventies and we did the eighties this this Ooh. Sunday. I did see part of the eighties live chat. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's and it's great stuff, man. It's it's great stuff. And you know, even though there's there's been good comedies since that time, it, it seems like it gets a little bit more fewer and far between it, for me anyways, as far as favorites. So Right. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, it's definitely also one of those where you kind of got to just trickle down and see, um, I guess, maybe like where it all kind of lays out. Like, mm -hmm. if this is that kind of crowd, then yes, that's generally the kind of material they're going to like. No foul. Mm -hmm. and then there's others where it's just like, yeah, well, how many have you actually seen? <laughs> right. Yes. True enough. True enough. Well, I'll let you pick another one if you really want. Uh, well, I, you know, again, um, a whole bunch um, came to mind and I was thinking, okay, well, is, is this underrated enough or, or is it, is it, <laughs> you know, or is it too popular or whatever? But another one, as soon as, like I said, as soon as we, we figured that I was going to be um, uh, joining the discussion on this, one movie that I think it was the movie that, well, it was the second movie that jumped to my mind, was Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> okay. And for me, that one, you know, although it had it had you know its own popularity uh, at the time, it seemed to be one of those comedies that was a little um, divisive, you know. Some people, you know, thought it was pretty good and then other people were just like, I don't get it. Um, so I watched it going in, like wondering, okay, which side of the fence am I gonna be on? And I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. Nice. I was, okay. and, I, and, I, and I was surprised by that too, you know, cause I, I you know, I, I had seen the, uh, whatever, you know, the commercials or whatever for it. And um, I was just like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> it stars uh, John, uh, John Hader. And, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. But I watched it. And, you know, it's early 2000s. Um, but it's it's got this quirky vibe to it, you know. And, and his character is one of those types of characters that, I mean, you're going to either love him or hate him. But if you love the character or if you can deal with the character, then you're all in, you know. So, yeah, that's my pick. Um, I think more or less, yeah, I mean, nowadays, I mean, everyone's even talking about how much like Blair Witch, it was like such a low budget indie, it's ridiculous, it's like, couldn't be made nowadays without everyone mm. asking that more be spent, you know, <laughs> just yes. running equipment and then, you know, like it or hate it comedy, but it becomes quotable because it's its own deal, it's not, it wasn't even trying to be quotable, that's just how right wacky movie it is um and i think that was around the time yeah fox searchlight was just snatching up material like you know little miss sunshine and such and it was just kind of like yeah like they're gonna get all these kinds of movies that are you know how do you even describe them how do you market because <laughs> yeah well that's true too. visual I mean, package <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean it's definitely one of those movies where it's like who who are you aiming this towards, you know, <laughs> and and that's kind of that's kind of how I, you know, um, felt about it when I first heard about it. But um, like I said, it was one of those things where I said, "Oh, well, let me just see what I think." And um, <laughs> like I said, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I'll wrap it up with one final. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, one called Loving Jezebel. Uh, this is just a weird, just kind of, I mean that in a good way. <laughs> this is kind of just a <laughs> atypical kind of just uh, Hill Harper. Yes, that's right. <laughs> From, huh. and the skulls, he got game. And yes, yes, Beloved. Yes. 
rec- more recently been on Homeland and CSI New York, but he was, yep. um, you know, been in so many different atypical movies. And if you look at his resume before, he was not afraid to, you know, star in, you know, atypical other indie fair like Lackawanna Blues and Mm-hmm. Uh, he even starred in this really messed up movie at one point called uh, Slaves of Hollywood, which just kind of just shows how uh, basically everyone can kind of become a victim in the entertainment industry. industry. Oh. It was a dark <laughs> comedy. And, and this one, you know, uh, it just came on stars quite a lot. It's mm-hmm. got abysmal reviews, but it's quite a lot of fun. It's got Laura Holloman, who some people probably knew from the L Word later on. Um, Yes. And Nicole Airy Parker. And hell, both those actresses were in uh, Boogie Nights, so that's funny. But yeah, this one has uh, Sandra and Holt, who other people will probably know from uh, House of Cards, 24, and The Expanse. But um, yes. Oh, yeah. Can- Canadian actress. So um, it's got a few other actors from The Wire, like John Delman and Lori- Larry Gilliard Jr. Um, what I really dug about was kind of just the music kind of getting everyone in the mood and just kind of, uh, just kind of just, <laughs> again, this guy is just cursed. He can't stop falling in love with other people's women. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's just hysterical, <laughs> uh, but it, without being even a date comedy, like he just goes around and he'll just meet up back during when the electronic music scene was kind of a thing. <laughs> just mm-hmm. kind of, it, it doesn't really use any symbolism, but it just kind of just shows how uh, he's just a lovable loser. You, you just love him without. Yeah. And nowadays, if they probably did it, it, they would probably make him even more pathetic or gross. And it's like, yeah, no, please don't do that. Let's, right. Just keep it just a simple, just kind of. And I mean, they just create comedy just kind of just so naturally. Like he'll just be hanging out in a comic book shop, and everyone's like, "What do you do?" <laughs> <laughs> just, just like shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, if you see it on the movie channels, you'll probably dig it. Yeah, I see. I have not seen it, but now I'm like, oh, well, I gotta check it out. Loving Jezebel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of it. But I've never, I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> again, you open up TV Guide, you'll see it on there. But <laughs> right. Uh, it definitely has a bigger cast than even I recall. It just, it went again. It was another movie that went really so fast, and it wasn't crude. It was just kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, the first review that comes up by San Francisco Chronicle usually is over the top. Uh saying it's a charmer. Roger Ebert gives it a decent review while saying it's got a lack of substance. Well, that's mm. kind of why I liked it. It's just kind of it's just a free-flowing kind of movie rather than a <laughs> just blunt. Like I think if you had it, usually I'm the kind of guy who wants extra detail, but this was kind of mm-hmm. one where it's like, I think if you add extra detail, it's just going to get too messy. <laughs> not saying right. it's welcome, because it'll be over Yeah. Yep. Too strong. <laughs> True enough. Uh, well, I think that's what we got. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, the, the, I mean, it's a good collection. And like I said, man, you know, a lot of these comedies and, and quite a few of them are in kind of in that same um, time frame of, you know, the, the, the mid 90s to the, uh, the early 2000s. There were a lot of them that just, like I said, they just got. It kind of came and went. Swamp. Maybe, yeah, yeah. You know, they might have had a little bit of you know fanfare or notoriety, but it was. In, in other words, it wasn't something like. Uh, well, geez, I'm trying to think of a modern comedy that was kind of. You know, like when the Hangover came out, and God, everybody was talking yeah. about that forever. You know, none of none of these movies really. You know had that type of fanfare or lasting effect really you know right <laughs> just a never-ending also to where it's like okay. yeah yeah exactly i mean the hangover was okay you know um i don't i don't i don't i don't think we needed all the other the other movies of it or whatever but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah uh, I, uh, be- 
before everyone was kind of relying on the twin movie formula is like you kind of would see a lot of indie films they advertise themselves as being similar but you also knew they could kind of stand on their own two feet mm -hmm. yep but there's still the ones is like i can't get certain people to watch certain stuff if uh, again if the cover or the poster is over marketed to look like another one like well <laughs> yeah now you just divided your audience on necessarily because yep <laughs> that's true so, where can everyone else find you on the web? <laughs> um, well, I am on my YouTube channel, uh, The Night Watch Zone, and um, we've been fortunate um, to, you know, still be doing our live shows uh, a couple times a week. Actually, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be doing something. I think it's supposed to be, uh, well, we're doing a couple episodes tomorrow, but yeah, so that's still going well, and um, we've been fortunate to be doing a live show uh three to four times a week so nice yay so yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yay. Uh, yeah but no it's fun it's fun doing it and um I, I you know i just love talking movies and um and, and the, you know one of the best parts about it and i think we talked about this before is just that you get into this community of 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 fans and and people that you know, have a lot of the same interests, but also, you know, different things that they bring to the table. And I think, you know, especially doing stuff like this tonight, um, that's some of the most fun that I've had, you know, right in, in, in this, in this journey, which, which originally was born out of having extra time because of the pandemic. So <laughs> this is, <laughs> yes. you know, this is, this has been, this has been great to, you know, be able to talk movies with people and you know um reminisce social interaction about... yes exactly it's from yeah. afar so it's not going to work for everybody but it's like well it beats having to test yourself out multiple times yeah yeah i mean i mean honestly before i got into to doing any of this um other than going to work i was just at home and hoping that um you know this this virus thing would uh, go away, <laughs> uh, and it wasn't it, it wasn't a lot of fun because you know you're sitting there alone and it's like ah uh, it'd be nice to be around some people. <laughs> exactly. So uh, well, and like you say, I mean, it's also uh, kind of a a trial and error kind of thing because like when I started up my new job, which, you know, I'm still fortunate to have this many years later, even during this awful thing, it's also was kind of one of those is like, I had to figure out what to do with myself on my days off. It's like, okay, I don't want to just hang out with friends or drive around yes. endlessly, waste my, you know, gas. And yes. like you say, don't want to also watch movies all day. I want to also kind of just have something about it, you know, aside from the fact that I'm trying to get through this thing and I'm binging it, you know, it's like, there's gotta be a little something more. There's gotta be a little heart to something. And so uh, it, it just kind of helped that I had already been on a podcast and it had gone terribly where, you know, two co-hosts were just not getting along and I was having to drive there. So I was just like, Jesus. Oh uh, yeah. It was like, we, we got to figure it out because life is short in, you know, right. And they were trying to do video too, and then they were like, "Well, maybe we should we should refilm it because the video went out." I'm like, "You are got to be kidding! Me. <laughs> You're not going <laughs> to get anything better than this." And if you go behind, and you know, obviously trial and error is inevitable, but it's like you gotta <laughs> make people want to tune in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's true. Very, very I think true. I could. I think I got some of the blame because I mean I kind of came up with a stupid name. It's like, well, no one really knows what that it means or what that name is, so we should have just changed the name. Oh, uh, well, you know, like you said, it going, we're still cool, but it's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's de definitely a lot of trial and error. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> you know, you you never really. Well, I don't. I don't want to say you never really know, but I mean, you do have a lot of top moments where it's like, oh, I don't know if this is working, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I can sympathize. I really can. Totally. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you ever so much for being on here. And cool. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> All righty. Sounds great, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. We'll return after these messages. 
Hey, feeling down? Feeling low? Not enough podcasts about movies in your life? Why not try... They must be destroyed on sight! The new Podcast Cure-All, sure to get you right with the world and on a path to better living. We have exploitation, we have Italian horror, we have zombies, we have slashers, we have crime films, we have spaghetti westerns, we even have sci-fi and sex comedies. So take a dose of... They must be destroyed on sight! As needed, and let the hosts, Lee Russell, Daniel Harper, Paul Romali, and the odd guest host, cure what ails you. Warning, may cause atrophy, African consumption, black fever, bone shave, chin puff, colic, cramp colic, dropsy of the brain, elephantitis, grocer's itch, jaundice, mania, miasma, mortification, palsy, pox disease, rheumatism, scurvy, St. Anthony's fire, summer complaint, and worm fit in some people. Consult a physician before listening. Hey, I heard you like movies. I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. Mm-hmm. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm-hmm. Music. music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the big one, music. Uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. <laughs> Undefeated. So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes. the Google Play, yes. Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah. We gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want us here to say, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> good fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> no, don't. Don't run the listeners away, Pete. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. And while Witch didn't make it to the top of the world, he did make the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. So join the gang and enjoy a movie review podcast about movie gangs, gangsters, mobsters, and the mayhem they cause. You can find GOH Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at GOH Pod at www.gohpod.com as well as your favorite podcast listening app. And remember, say hello to your little friend for me. If you take two old punk rockers who are past their prime, put them in front of a movie screen and give them a podcast, what do you get? Cinema punks. Cinepunks. It's the mixtape of movies. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. 
It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. Unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything Dude, that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. Hey everybody, I'm Corey. And I'm Zach. And we're the hosts of Podcasting After Dark, a cast dedicated to late night horror and sci-fi of the 80s and 90s, often found on HBO and Cinemax. You know, the movies your parents didn't want you watching as a kid. You can find us every other week on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. This is what you want. This is what you get. It's late, it's time, let's check our cue, baby Pair it with a couple brews, baby We love good movies We love the bad ones, too So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you Oh, yeah Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes of gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Welcome to Who Was She Podcast. I am your host, Tara Jabari. After a decade working in documentaries, marketing, and all things digital media, I found that podcasting is a strong medium to share stories. After years of producing for others, I decided to start my own biographical podcast. Who Was She will focus on the life of a woman throughout Baha'i history. The first season is about Lydia Zeminoff. Lydia's story explores the subjects of the power of language and faith. Her father invented the universal language Esperanto, and she came from a Jewish family and became a Baha'i. She grew up during World War I and was killed during World War II in a concentration camp, despite heroic efforts to save her life. How can one person's life intersect with so many others? connect across borders, and inspire a biography which inspired this podcast. Over the next few weeks, I will share her story with you and the lives that were most affected by her and those who affected her life as well. They include her father, Ludwig Semenov, her spiritual mother, American journalist Martha Root, and the Baha'i German soldier Fritz Mako, who worked for the resistance undercover while having to serve the Nazi party. I want to thank the author Wendy Heller and George Ronald Publishing for their blessing to let me use Heller's biography, Lydia, The Life of Lydia Zeminoff, Daughter of Esperanto, as a main and instrumental resource for this podcast. So please subscribe and learn about this amazing woman who traveled through three continents in an effort to bring unity through the power of language. You can also find more information on our Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest at Who Was She Podcast. Music was composed and performed by Sam Red. I am your host, Tara Jabari. Join us next time as we begin our journey about Lydia Zeminoff. Hi, everybody. It's Mac Jackson. I wanted to invite you to a new site called the Forever Adventure Network. This website has everything. Pictures, videos, blogs. There's original music by Harmony Constant. 
two podcasts. One is the MacGyver podcast, where we celebrate Richard Dean Anderson, his iconic roles, and how it's influenced our lives. There's episode discussions, interviews, and life conversations. The second podcast is the Never Gets Old podcast, where we celebrate all the best things that we love in life, from TV, movies, music, and comics. The site is also the home for the MacGyver SG-1 audio series, an ongoing adventure series that continues the adventures of MacGyver and SG-1. There are also multiple stores to choose from for all of your pop culture and adventure needs. Come on by and check us out today. And thanks for joining the adventure. Are you sick of the same old stale podcasts? Well, then join Vanessa and Darren as they dissect movies of all kinds. The two lifelong cinema lovers bring their favorites, curiosities, and first-time watches to the operating table and inject them with a healthy dose of snark. Then there's the waiting room where they examine books and short stories. So just look for them on Apple Podcasts and where fine podcasts are available. They're part of the Legion Podcast Network. Follow them on Twitter at VD Clinic Pod. Join them on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash VD Clinic Pod. Or email them at vdclinicpod at gmail.com They're ready to cure what ails you. (laughs) And still, they just might be a little contagious. Hi there. It's Heather from the Watching Netflix Without You podcast. Did you know that there are over 1,200 Netflix original feature films and documentaries? And that number is only growing. So I've made it my mission to watch as many as I possibly can. Then, with a delightful guest or guests, disclaimer, more often than not my brother Ryan, we spend an episode rating, reviewing, and discussing a film at length. The first half of every episode is spoiler-free for those who haven't seen it yet. And in the second half, after a very clear spoiler warning, we dive into it. And that's really about it. You can listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. We now continue with our program. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up review show.